All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Today we are going to cover pouring our piers and then installing our uh, bracket. So uh, before we get going, we're going to go through these brackets. We get lots of questions on these, uh, lots of comments, concerns. So we're just going to kind of go through that first and then we'll jump into the show. Um, but for those of you who are wanting to self build, don't forget we have a Patreon group where you can join. Um, every month we do a live, you can ask questions, uh, it puts you in a community of other self builders so you can uh, talk to them as well. Um, if you're looking to design your own home or building, you can contact us, design at Mr. Post Frame, we can also help you out with that. But let's go ahead and talk about these brackets. The brackets, all of our uh, buildings, whether it's a home or a shop, garage, all of our posts get put out of the ground. And so we pour piers. We use a 16 inch auger. The hole ends up being 18 to 20 inches in diameter. It's just the way it works. And uh, it works out really well. We use sono tubes to uh, form up the top of our holes. And then when we pour these, we use a combination of wet set brackets and then dry set universals. Um, there are uh, times where we will use the dry set brackets. If we're doing a continuous footing wall, um, you can also use wet sets on those. It's just kind of um, whatever your preference is. Just to start out, um, these are all engineered and des designed to withstand the required bending, uplift, shear, all that good stuff that's required by the building code. So you wouldn't be allowed to use these if they weren't up to par. Um, we will leave a link in the description uh, for uh, per Midwest Perma Column, that's who we use for our brackets is Midwest Perma Column. They have all the specs, all the requirements when you're setting these uh, that you need to abide by when doing it. It's actually pretty easy to do. So I'm just gonna go through these brackets. Typically all our buildings are either three ply two by six columns or four ply two by six columns. And um, just how we decide what we're gonna use is if we're anything 16 foot and over on the sidewall, we use a four ply anything under we use a three ply we'll just use this bracket uh, for our example so this is a three ply two by six column um, and again i'm not going to get into a bunch of the specs i will tell you um, what the shear and all this of one, this one specific bracket is but i just want to talk about this a uh, couple different things it's got four 18 inch rebar um, welded to a quarter inch plate that is welded to the u bracket Okay, so they, te they put this through testing on bending, they put it through uh, testing on uh, shear and uplift, and it passes with flying colors. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple numbers for you. So for this specific 2x6 column, it's an SWP 63 3-ply three 2x6 column. So for bending, what is allowed is 24,960. It is rated at 33,670, so well above. Um, it's shear is the allowed is 2100 pounds it shears at 2830 pounds so again above and then uplift is 6050 pounds and it is rated at 8160 so to give you a little bit of peace of mind um, there they exceed uh, far and above what is required so I personally am not uh, worried about using these in any way, shape, or form. A lot of people say, oh, you need J-hooks or it's not going to work, and, li and it's like, it, they do work. It's been proven that they work, they've been tested that they work, um, as long as you abide by the rules. Um, one thing to consider is when you put, uh, we get a lot of questions on, is like, people will ask, well, it's not completely in the center of the footing. And if you've ever drilled holes, that's next to impossible to do on every sing single hole. If you hit a, hit a rock, it could bump you over a couple inches. It needs to be full bearing. And then in uh, their specs, it'll tell you how much full coverage you need. So how much concrete do you need on the outside edge of this? And I think it's two and 11 sixteenths inches of concrete needs to be on the outside edge of this rebar for it to reach its full capacity. Um, so we achieve that in all these. So if you're not dead center, it's okay. Now, if you're doing a continuous footing wall, it does need to be in the center and the minimum wall thickness you can use is eight inches. And the reason it needs to be in the center is to reach that full capacity of concrete on each side. That's why they have to be in the center of the wall. Um, also, these are tested for the wood 
to metal contact, like sheer uplift. They're held in here by two half inch uh, bolts. Um, plus in the SW63, there's four five sixteenths um, structural lags. And if you look at the structural lags, there's threads and then there is a smooth part of the, the lag that actually goes through the, the steel and into the board. And that's so um, it has a higher shear strength than just the threads. So these were very well thought out. Um, they're awesome to use. We use these um, on all of our buildings. We use universal brackets, which is this. It's a dry set bracket at all our corners and garage door openings. We also get a lot of questions um, about these. Are they strong enough? They are strong enough. We use them. We've had no problems with them. If you don't like this, you can always cut one of these in half and then you're putting two rebars in. It just gets a little bit more difficult um, to be that precise um, when you're doing your corners and your garage door openings, but it's definitely doable um, if you don't want to use the uh, universals. One thing about my show that you'll notice, you'll never see me in any video tell you that you have to do something the way I do it or it's wrong. That's just not the case. There's more than one way to do this, but I can tell you from my experience um, and working with these, these are very safe to use. They exceed all the limits that you need them to. And uh, one last thing that I want to talk about is um, these are rated for sheer uplift, all that kind of good stuff. And once we get into this video, we're going to show you the finished product after we pour our concrete slab. But your lateral strength comes from tying all your posts together. So once you apply all your girts, once you apply your cross bracing, once you get your uh, diaphragm on your in a post frame, it's the steel that gives you your shear value and it ties those posts together. So that gives them the lateral strength. And then we'll show you after the video um, how it looks once the concrete is poured and how we lock all the, the bottoms of those brackets in. And it's a really, really strong uh, structure and a base to start with. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual show. close there, right? Yep. So come in. And you just want it just to sit right there. Now I'm off, so I gotta tilt it. So I'll just put pressure like that as I go up and down. A little bit more. 
what it looks like. And then, once you get that, then you have to make sure you're about an inch and five eighths off. Which I am. And I am. So, that one's good. Okay, it just needs to be in between those lines is all. I mean, you want it close, but and you can't level it this way. People will badmouth me on all the channels, but like these are flared out. Mm -hmm. So if I level it, then this is going to tip the whole thing that way. If you want to level it that way, you can go like this. But even that's kind of a hard. Yeah, because some of them might. It doesn't matter. Those are going to squeeze in, so it's a mute point. So you want to try one? Um, go ahead. And then just keep. Just kind of let the weight of that do. These are wet enough that. So anywhere from an inch and five eighths to inch and three quarters off that line, we're good to go. Okay. Okay. That just gives us a little bit extra play with our post. This is the first row we poured, wasn't it? Yeah. So we should be fine with all the others. So anywhere from inch and five eighths, inch and three quarters, you're good. All right, now keep it there, Cash. Okay. So 16 and seven is 23. Tell me when. Yep. And I had to move that one, so yep, we're good. forward to where the building's built we have all our concrete in I'll show you what these um, brackets look like how we do them so we'll bring our vapor barrier underneath up the sides around this post and then after our concrete gets poured we cut it all off but what I wanted to show you is right on top of our pier is two inches of polystyrene and then on top of that is five inches of concrete we pour the concrete around this column, which locks this bracket in, giving it a ton of lateral strength. So you can see down there, that one's the same. So these, these columns are not going anywhere. They're, they're not going side to side. There's no uh, chance that uplift is going to be an issue. And then by the time you put all of your girts on and your steel, your shear strength is super strong and you're not going to have any lateral movement up top either. This is just how we choose to do it. Um, and then we come around and cut all the plastic off right along here. And then our spray foam will get attached here and go all the way up the side. 
All right, we just set our last brackets here this morning. We had 33 footings and it was just me and Cash. So I got uh, my six or seven year old boy up. He came out here this morning with me at six and he helped us uh, smooth out these piers and he did a great job. So I'm super pumped about that. And then Emily came out here with our girls and Emily helped. Um, so we got this whipped out and I feel really good about it. Um, it went really smooth. I tell you what, that concrete bucket is a game changer because you don't have to worry about getting that truck in around your footings. And I don't even know, it wouldn't even have been possible on this one. So um, if you guys have any questions, um, don't be afraid to leave those in the comments. We will do our best to answer them. This house here, it's two story, 18 foot sidewall. So we have uh, four ply brackets on this part. And then the garage is 10 foot sidewall. So we just have three ply brackets. But last thing we gotta do is just take our string lines down so nobody trips over them if they come out to look. And then we are out of here. As always, thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next video.